This is our biggest 24 to 70 showdown yet, folks. We're looking at six different lenses, F mount and Z mount, Nikon's own, as well as Tamron and Sigma offerings, all autofocus to see if there's really a difference that justifies the price variations. I'm comparing six 24 to 70 lenses for Nikon Z. 24 to 70 is such a flexible and versatile focal length. I think it's a staple in a lot of photographers kit, whether you're a beginner or a pro. These are all autofocus options. Some of them are F mount, actually four out of the six are F mount. For those, we'll be using the FTC Mark II adapter. And this is to let you know if you're in the Z ecosystem, which of these is going to work best, or if you're considering moving, whether your lens is going to continue performing. Quick overview on the lenses, we have the F4Z S lens, this is $1,000. The Tamron 2.8, that is $1,200. The Sigma is $1,300. The ED, which was my go-to in F mount, that one is 1600. Then stepping up to the VR version is 2100. And then to the new flagship, which is the ZS 2.8, which is 2300. We're gonna run them through a bunch of different image quality tests and autofocus and handling. Let's first off head out with Honey and shoot all of these lenses wide open to compare the bokeh. Now we're gonna share these images in a random secret order and we'll keep the numbering the same though. So just pay attention to which one you like best. Back inside now, bokeh is one thing, but overall sharpness and contrast can be another. So let's shoot them all stop down to f5.6 using an off-camera flash to bring up the exposure here and see what kind of detail we can get from each of the lenses. Here we go with the full wide shot and then 100% crop on each of these. Make sure you download the sample image files in the description below so you can see them in their full detail. YouTube compression really crushes the details. So far folks, all six of them are performing pretty well. Now that was a fairly basic test. We're going to do some more detailed and challenging autofocus tests coming up soon. But in that kind of a simple situation, they're all performing quite well. Let me know if out of the six, there's one that you prefer the look of so far. Let me know as a comment below. But if you're in the market to get one of these, you can see in that kind of a simple situation, using the FTC adapter, they're working really nicely. Check out the sponsor of this video, B&H Photo. They have a huge range, including all of the different 24 to 70s from different manufacturers. And you can check out Payboo, which is a store payment card that instantly credits you back the amount of sales tax on your order, available exclusively at B&H Photo. And given these lenses tend to be universally priced everywhere, being able to save the sales tax makes B&H basically the cheapest place you can get these guys new. Check it out, link for that is in the description below. Well, you're gonna find out which lens was which now because we're going to film them as I do an autofocus test. So we've got Honey heavily backlit here. We do have a the overhead lights on, so there's a tiny bit of fill. It was struggling to find her at all without that on. But we're still at like ISO 1600 to be able to get an exposure here. I'm gonna set all the lenses to 50 mil at closest focus at 0.7 of a stop overexposed and then see how long they take to detect her and pull focus. So first one, the 24 to 70 ED. Pretty much instantaneously, but when there was no overhead light, it was only finding the outline of her, not actually getting her properly. Oh, and that is the fastest. So far anyway, the VRED. Yeah, almost instant. I'm 
impressive from the Sigma. Yeah, impressive. It still took a while for the exposure to come up, but got her. Instant, 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 no problem. Lucky last is him. So far, all six are giving really acceptable results. If you're in the Nikon Z system, make sure you check out my expert setup guide. It takes you through every different camera in the range and shows you how to initially set them up, all of the physical controls on the camera, and how to customize it to get the best out of it for your particular style of shooting. Links in the description below. For the next one, next to this busy ass road, I want to test each of the six lenses and how they can focus track in video. So if we choose this as your starting point, I know the first lens is able to detect your face here and choose a, well, we might do the first lens a few times to determine the pace, but I'll get you to basically run straight at the camera and then just at the last minute, go past me okay. at, around to the left. Okay. So I'm gonna start at 70 mil at F2.8 on her. And then as she gets close, I'll be zooming out and then going with her and we'll see how long they're able to keep up or if, you're too fast for them even. So that could actually be a fun one. Maybe we'll have you run fast, not just the jog. So we'll really see if the camera can keep up. Mm. Let's do a Champion test. Five. Bruh, bruh, yeah. Winner is across this line. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> so look, overall, they're all performing great. I would be interested to hear what you think of the image quality for yourself, but in terms of focus, they were all doing pretty well. Now, the Sigma and Tamron are a little bit behind. Yes, the Sigma on the indoor test was doing really well though, but for the running video test, both of them were a little bit less reliable, but I guess you would expect that Nikon's going to engineer the FTC2 to work perfectly with their own stuff, and the latest generation is going to likely give you the best results. In terms of image quality, I actually went through and checked them for myself uh, blindly as well, and all of the lenses are marked with a number, so I can now check which is which in terms of what I most enjoyed. So, four and six. So one thing that I noticed on the bokeh test, there were variations and yes, it was the newest one that was giving the best results overall, I felt. But generally, I felt that the Sigma was giving quite a cool cast, despite them being shot in the same settings, and that the F4 was giving quite a warm tone to the images. In terms of image quality, Again, not too surprising that these guys were both doing really well. I actually thought the F4 was, of the test shots I took, probably the best, and the other two Nikons were doing fantastically well as well. That's at 100%. If you're just using them for any kind of general shooting where you're not cropping into 100% all the time, then all six of them are giving really acceptable results throughout the range. So if you, you know, are already in the Z system or if you're still in the F mount range and you're considering what to buy, don't discount some of the older ones. The only one I would say, it's probably not worth considering the VR if you're in the Z range. It's almost the same price as the new flagship 
and it's slightly behind in most regards. It's much bigger, it's much heavier, and you're not really getting much of an advantage. The bodies now have the stabilization. You don't need that extra weight in the lens. But something like the ED lens is a fantastic option, and that's a good $700 retail cheaper, and you can much more easily find these used. Do check out all of the sample files below. Whilst you're over at my website, learn.mattgranger.com, you can check out my guide to the Nikon Z mirrorless system. Let me know any questions you have, and I'll see you later.